Okay, we'll do that. So with that, we will call our meeting to order. So good evening and welcome to the September 8th, 2020 Vista Consolidated Meeting. The meeting is now called to order. This meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with the state of California Executive Order N-29-20. In the event form of the city council loses electrical power or suffers an internet connection outage that is not corrected within 10 minutes, the meeting will automatically be adjourned. Like hopefully no rolling blackouts, huh? Any items noticed as public hearings at that point would be continued to the next regularly scheduled evening meeting of the city council. Any other items on the agenda that council has not taken action on will be placed on a future agenda. And with that, we will do a roll call by our assistant city manager, Ali Zimmerman. Thank you. Um, when you hear your name, please state you're present. Mayor Ritter. Present. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Present. Council Member Franklin. Here. Council Member Green. Here. Council Member Contreras. Present. All members are present. In accordance with the Brown Act, I'd like to announce that as a result of convening simultaneous meetings, the members of the Buena Sanitation District will receive compensation of $147.75 for the district meeting pursuant to Buena Sanitation District Ordinance 2006-1. For members of the public that are participating through Zoom, you may raise your hand to indicate you would like to speak by clicking the raise hand feature on your screen or by pressing star nine on your phone. Instructions on how to join the meeting through Zoom are provided on the agenda cover sheet. Staff will be lowering everyone's hand now to start the meeting. We will announce when to raise your hand to indicate you would like to make a comment on the specific item being discussed. You may only speak on an item once and public to three minutes. So with that, we will have the approval of the agenda with our city manager, Patrick Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. There are no ch changes this evening to the agenda. Okay, with that, we have one presentation this evening and our city manager, Patrick Johnson, is going to provide us a COVID-19 update. So good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Um, so today I thought I'd give you an overview on what's taken place in the last couple of weeks since you last met. Um, I think as most of you know, uh, about a week and a half ago on August 28th, um, the governor announced a blueprint for a safer economy and the blueprint replaces uh, the metrics that the county was using for when businesses can open and when they uh, are not allowed to be open. And so uh, uh, there was was going to be a slide that was uh, going to be placed up, but I'm not sure if Allie's got the capability to do that or not. Um, but I think all of you ha were emailed that slide. There it is. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. But you can see from the slide that you may have in front of you that uh, the new framework lists four uh, tiers or four uh, categories. And all counties will abide by the same rules and um, they'll fall into these tiers. So uh, that is not the screen. Let me get this one. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. So there you go. You have it in front of you. Um, so as you can see, uh, there's two categories there, case rate and test positivity rates. Those are the two categories that the state has chosen uh, that'll determine the metrics on whether businesses or uses can operate. And you can see there that the categories are labeled. Uh, the purple category is the widespread category. The substantial category is red. Moderate is um, the orange and minimal is yellow. And so counties are placed within those. And so widespread, what this means, as you can see on the chart, is that a, a county that has more than seven cases daily on average per 100,000 population and a test positivity rate of over 8% uh, would fall into this category. And I will say the widespread category out of all the counties in uh, California, 38 counties uh, are in this category. So by far the large majority of the counties are in the widespread and under the widespread, uh, as you might remember that not a lot of businesses are able to open indoors for any type of use. The next category there is the red, which is the substantial. And this means that a county has four to seven uh, new cases per 100,000 population and a positivity rate of between five and 8%. And this is the category that the county of San Diego is currently in. And within this category, as of uh, yesterday, there were nine counties 
that fell into the red category or the substantial category. The next one is the moderate. Uh, this is uh, means a county has between one and 3.9 cases per 100,000 and a positivity rate of two to 4.9%. And there's only eight counties in this category. And then the last one is minimal. This is the yellow. And it means that a county has less than one case per 100,000 and a positivity rate of 2%. And there are only three counties in the entire state that fall into this category. And so every week on Tuesdays, there'll be weekly assessments to uh, allow the counties to better understand what tier they fall into. And counties must stay in a tier for 21 days before becoming eligible to go to another tier. And after 21 days, if they've met those metrics for at least two straight weeks, they can move or change tiers. Now you can also, you can move up, so you can go from the widespread category to the substantial, or you can go from the substantial category and move back to widespread. So you can go back. So the factors are the same. If you have two consecutive weekly periods where you don't meet the metrics in your category, you can move up or down. Down. Um, if a county does move down, meaning uh, you went from substantial to widespread, uh, that would mean that the county has three days to implement the changes. So as an example, in San Diego County, uh, we have businesses that are open to a variety of degrees. If we went from substantial to widespread, the county would have three days to revert to uh, not allowing businesses to open indoors. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we are currently in the substantial category, which is the RAD category. As of uh, Sunday, which was September 6th, uh, the county had a uh, adjusted uh, case rate of 5.8, and we had a positivity rate of 4.2. So we fell right in that category. Um, with the way the, the testing has gone, uh, Currently, I think um, the county, while they haven't publicized it on their website yet, I think if you're doing the numbers, uh, the adjusted case rate is going to be significantly higher than 5.8, and the positive test case rate is probably somewhere around 4.2, 4.3%. Um, but under this category that we're currently in, um, different uses can operate. So restaurants uh, are able to allow for dine-in, which has been uh, very well received, uh, and they can do 25% capacity or 100 uh, persons, whichever is fewer. And one of the questions that we received over the weekend was, do restaurants still have to close at 10 p.m. or can they be open later? And the answer is yes, they still have to close at 10 p.m. Places of worship can now operate indoors, same criteria, 25% or 100 people, whichever is lower. lower. Uh, movie theaters, they can operate as well at 25% or 100 people, whichever is lower. And then you get into some of the other categories, gym and fitness centers, uh, dance studios, yoga studios, they can all operate at 10% capacity. And then hair salons, barbershops, nail salons, uh, tattoo parlors, and skin care, uh, they can all open with modifications. So the good news is that we're in the substantial category, which allows some businesses to reopen to a degree indoors. Um, I think the bad news is that we're teetering between substantial and widespread, and so uh, the outcome for businesses could change in the coming weeks. So that's an update on uh, where we stand. That completes uh, my update to you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Do you see any, any questions? Nobody is waving at me. So with that, we will move on to our consent calendar. Um, Joe, it's hard to see you, so you have to make big waves, okay, in your little over there. Yes, okay, got it. Okay, so the recommendations on the following consent calendar will be enacted in one motion unless an item is removed from the calendar. Any member of the public may remove an item by using the raise hand feature or by pressing star nine now. Items removed from the consent calendar will be considered immediately following adoption of the calendar. And we have eight consent items this evening. So do any of our council members want to remove an item? John Franklin, are you, John, council member Franklin? I'd offer a motion to approve the consent agenda. I just don't see a second. Joe, are you, you are, okay. Joe. I'll go ahead and second. Okay. Okay. I have a motion and a second. So um, please cast your votes or we're going to do 
Mayor, let me, if I could just point out, no member of the public has requested to remove an oh. item from the consent calendar either. Got to ask that. Sorry. Okay. okay. So with that, we're going to cast our votes, being nobody has anything to pull. So. Need a roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. That is me. <laughs> I do not have. A, I do not have a script. So we'll just go. It is when you hear your name, please state your vote. Mayor Ritter. Um. Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby. Aye. Councilmember Franklin. Aye. Councilmember Green. Aye. Councilmember Contreras. Aye. That motion passes unanimously. Okay. So that. Motion passes unanimously. And the next thing we have is um, we have one discussion item this evening. Um, fiscal years 2019 and 20 and 2020 to 21 operating budget mid-cycle update. And our senior management analyst, Sarah Taylor, will be providing the staff report. If any members of the public wish to speak on this item, they may indicate so by using the raise hand feature or by pressing star nine now. Speakers will be called upon um, after the presentation. So with that, I'll turn it over to our Analyst Sarah Taylor. Hi, good evening, Mayor and City Council. The purpose of this discussion item is to provide a mid cycle update for the operating budget and recommend revised appropriations for fiscal year 2020 21. On slide one, the next slide, uh, on June 25th of 2019, the City Council adopted the fiscal years 2019-20 and 2020-21 operating budget, transitioning from a single year budget to a two year budget. Under the two year budget, the City continues to operate on a July 1st through June 30th annual fiscal year, retaining the fiscal control provided by annual budgets. As part of the fiscal control, staff has completed a mid-cycle review and is presenting revised estimates of revenues and expenditures for fiscal year 2020-21 to the city council for approval. For fiscal year 2019-20, which ended on June 30th, revenues continue to be received and expenditures continue to be processed into the first couple months of the current fiscal year. As such, staff is still evaluating the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and stay-at-home order on the city's fiscal year 1920 finances and will present the full effects later this year as part of the fourth quarter financial report to the city council. On slide two and the rest of the report, it focuses on year two of the two-year budget. The total proposed amended 2020-21 operating budget for all funds uh, is $149.3 million. It's a decrease of $951,000 from the original adopted budget. Slide 2 shows the breakdown by expense category and by funding type, with the general fund shown in the green and the non-general fund, fund shown in blue. Uh, as illustrated on this slide, the general fund or unrestricted monies fund the bulk of the city's expenses, including general government and all of public safety. Slide three outlines the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the city's revenues. It has drastically impacted sales tax, transient occupancy tax, or also known as hotel tax, charges for services in the recreation and community services department, and gas tax revenues. The city has proactively worked to build reserves to better prepare the city to handle economic downturns. The city's emergency reserve is at 31% of the general fund operating budget with an additional structural deficit reserve of 9.3 million. In April, the city council approved the use of the structural deficit reserve to support the city's operating budget for 2019-20 and for 2020-21 to mitigate significant reductions of staff and core services due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Based on revised general fund revenues and appropriation reductions, use of the structural deficit reserve for fiscal year 2020-21 is estimated at 3.5 million. Staff is committed to the quarterly budget process to effectively and proactively manage the city's finances as the results of the pandemic continue to unfold. Slide four summarizes the revised rep general fund revenue estimates for fiscal year 2020-21. The general fund is the primary funding source for essential services for the daily operations of the city. 
Until the COVID-19 pandemic, the general fund revenues were continuing to increase. However, the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic have drastically impacted general fund revenues, and they are projected to decrease by approximately 5.5 million for the fiscal year from the original adopted budget. Over 80% of the general fund revenues are derived from three sources, property taxes, sales taxes, and charges for services. Property tax remains relatively stable and is estimated at 24.8 million for 2020-21, an estimated 3% growth over fiscal year 1920 actuals. Sales tax revenue, however, is highly dependent on continued employment and consumer confidence and has been heavily impacted. Uh, the estimated decrease in sales and use tax is 1.8 million from the original adopted budget and an additional 684,000 decrease from sales tax from Proposition L. Revenue from charges for services is projected to decrease by 2.3 million. 1.7 million is directly related to the drastic decrease in our ability to provide programming related to the recreation and community services department. As a result of the stay at home order, the moonlight summer season was canceled. The senior center and recreation divisions have had to cancel majority of their programs. And the Wave Water Park, which is part of the department, but not in the general fund, has also canceled virtually all programming. Other significant changes from the original budget include projected decreases of $1 million to the hotel tax and $500,000 in business licenses and permits, as well as a projected increase of $1.7 million in medical cannabis taxes. On slide five, uh, the summary of the expenditure changes for the general fund by category. The total proposed amended fiscal year 2021 operating budget for the general fund is 83.6 million, a decrease of 1.9 million from the original adopted budget. The largest uh, appropriation decrease for the general fund is for the Recreation Community Services Department, which includes recreation, the Adobe Senior Services and Cultural Arts, the stay-at-home order has halted or drastically reduced the programming in this department. On slide six, uh, there are several program areas that require general fund subsidies to continue normal operation. Declines in fuel consumption and vehicle sales have reduced gas tax revenues, reduced, resulting in a budgetary subsidy for the gas tax repair and maintenance fund. Another significant change is an increase in the subsidy to cultural arts. This is due to the loss of revenues from the cancellation of the Moonlight Summer 2020 season. On slide seven, the summaries of the total operating budget by fund type. The total revised operating budget for expenditures for fiscal year 2020-21 for all funds is 149.3 million a decrease of 951,000 from the original budget. Exhibit five included in the agenda report provides revised revenue estimates and appropriation detail by fund and budget unit. This concludes the mid-cycle update for the operating budget. I am available if there are any questions. Okay, do I have any questions? Um, should, I just want to, do I, should I go through everybody or do you want to wave at me? I can just... Um... I guess Deputy Mayor, do you have any questions? I'll kind of go through the list here. No. How about um, Council Member Franklin? Okay. Yeah, I just want to offer uh, a word of appreciation for all of our staff, and including all those uh, who are in the budget planning and management. I'm proud of where we're at as a city. Also, uh, you know, uh, my praise to my colleagues. Uh, we are in a really good place as a city financially because of some big decisions that we made years ago coming out of the recession. Uh, we have planned for a small recession. Uh, our, our city management council have wisely put back uh, funds in addition to our larger emergency reserve. We put back funds for short uh, term uh, deficit. And so we're in a good place. We've also made some tough decisions and we've had to uh, reduce some programming uh, and we're all looking forward to that programming coming back online, the moonlight, the wave, uh, and getting back to normal safely. But uh, we've, we're really in a good place. And uh, we're, we're really, as a city, uh, to be commended for the place that we're in. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we haven't uh, 
we haven't suffered any uh, terrible effects of this uh, of the pandemic yet. And I think we're going to come through this in a really good position. So uh, I'm really uh, pleased to receive this report. Uh, and even though it's uh, it's red ink in the short term, because of our sound long term planning, uh, we're going to be OK. We're going to get through this. Councilmember Green, do you have anything? Yeah, I just want to thank staff again for a fantastic update. And also, it looks like it's a little bit better than what we expected. Only having to use 3.5 million of the structural deficit, I think, is about half of what initially we thought we were going to have to use, you know, initially when this was all sprung upon us. So, you know, hopefully businesses will get back, we'll be rebounding and uh, be putting more money back in those reserves pretty soon. So thank you so much for your report and thank you, uh, colleagues for the decisions that you made to make sure that we had the money to get through this pandemic. Great job. Councilmember Contreras. Yeah, I just want to echo the comments of my colleagues. Uh, you know, very appreciative of where we're at in the city financially, which allows us to continue to, to plan long term um, and have those community goals um, and continue to work towards them. So uh, it, I know it's difficult, um, but you know, where the ship is going in the right direction. And also, I just want to say um, that our businesses, I want to thank all our businesses for just staying strong through this. Um, you know, I overheard uh, one of our uh, local business owners talking about the uh, Vista is open and how great it was that they came and did a promotional video. And, you know, um, so people are utilizing the programs that we put forward. And I just want to thank my colleagues and all my coworkers on staff uh, for the incredible job that uh, we've done to really help uh, as best as we can in this situation. So just hoping for the best. Um, and I, I did try, um, you know, dining in and it, it went really well. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll spot one of y'all on one of my outings uh, pretty soon. And uh, until then, uh, Let's just keep working together and, and making sure that you know, we're putting our community uh, in the horizon uh, and working towards those goals. Um, City Clerk Valdez, do we have any members of the public that want to speak on this? No, we do not. So we'll go ahead and close the opportunity for public comment on this item. I think the deputy mayor may have wanted to make a remark. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I just see that we need to make a motion. So I was going to move that we approve uh, a staff's recommendation in both item one and two on this um, item. Yeah, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, so with that, um, please conduct a roll call vote. Thank you. Mayor Ritter? Yes. Deputy Mayor Rigby? Yes. Councilmember Franklin? Aye. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Contreras? Aye. Item passes unanimously. Okay, the next thing that brings us to um, our oral communications. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to comment on agency related matters that are not on the agenda. If any members of the public wish to address the city council, they may indicate so by using the raise the hand feature or pressing star nine now. Um, do we have any um, public speakers? City Clerk? Nope, you don't have any speakers. So we'll close the opportunity for oral communication. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. One person just raised their hand. So we have um, Chad saying, sorry, we're kind of tag teaming it here. So Chris is gonna um, put Chad in um, and we'll give him three minutes to speak. Okay, Chad, go ahead. All right, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, so this is a oral communication for public comment. Yes. All right. Um, thank you. Um, first off, uh, thank you all for uh, your hard work and dedication to do all of these meetings. Uh, I really appreciate having this online. This is really nice. Uh, but uh, I wanted to touch on a subject. Uh, I reside at 243 North Citrus Avenue. And on Thursday, September 3rd, I was I was uh, I received a violation from Municipal Code 1852-060 exceeding the allowable four square foot limit for residential signage, punishable by a fine of up to $1,000, including possible sign removal at my expense. 
And reading through the code, it's clear the intent is to regulate signage in the public right away with a fair, safe, and uniform code that maintains a level of control. However, using one's home as a medium to engage in political discussion is a unique and personal choice that should not be infringed. And according to the 94 Supreme Court ruling of Galeo versus the city of Ladue, set the precedence that time, place, and manner restrictions or content-based sign restrictions were both shown to be unsatisfactory. They ruled that displaying a sign from one's own residence carries a message quite distinct from placing the same sign someplace else or provides information about the speaker's identity, which is an important component of many attempts to persuade. So in the spirit of Constitution Week, I urge the council to take action and establish a moratorium on enforcing this unconstitutional code that permits anyone with a phone to weaponize city staff against a citizen's right to free speech, especially during these trying times when traditional methods of campaigning are off the table for certain people who happen to be immunocompromised or have any other health issues. So uh, with that, I would... Um, uh, give my time and thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. And that um, will close oral communications. We have no other speakers. Okay, with that, then we will go to, um, I will do, um, I think I'll do my uh, mayor's comments and then I'll go to each of you for your comments. So um, I have here low income VISTA seniors and persons with disabilities may be eligible to receive a free electric fan. The County of San Diego is providing fans to those who are living on limited incomes. To be eligible, a re resident must not have access to an air-conditioned space at their home or apartment building. To learn more, call the County's Aging and Independent Services at 1-800-339-4661. So it's 800-339-4661. Um, join the City of Vista remotely at this year's annual Coastal Cleanup Day on Saturday, September 26th. This year, volunteers will clean up their neighborhoods in order to stay safe, and we appreciate all of our cleanup volunteers, and we know that they make a positive impact on our community. Information is online at cleanupday.org. And the last thing the San Diego County Registrar of Voters is preparing election ballots for mailing and is encouraging active registered voters to check their voter registration now to get a mail ballot at their address later. To so learn more at sdvote.com. And that's most of my... Um, Comments, and so I will go to Deputy Mayor first. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to say um, a couple of thank yous. First off, I want to say thank you to Matt and everybody over at the Boys and Girls Club today for inviting us. Um, two of my council members uh, joined me, uh, Council Member Contreras and Councilman Green, uh, to welcome back the students to school. So we got to cheer them on as they went down the um, archway and, and got to have their pictures taken. So thank you for including us in that. That was a lot of fun. And I also wanted to say thank you to our Vista Fire Department for all that they've been doing for uh, support in the fires up north, as well as the newest fire that we have uh, over this weekend over in uh, the Valley Fire. I know that we have one of our teams is back from up north. I'm not sure if the second one is back yet or not, but I wanted to just say thank you to them for all that they're doing, uh, not just here in Vista, but throughout the state. And also to say thank you to our staff for the work that you do all the time for us, and especially in this time, uh, it's not easy for anybody here at the city, city staff, or even our residents out in the city, who also I want to give a big shout out to for all of the accommodations that we all are making for making our way through this whole event and the changing rules and, and the, the things that we're having to deal with on, an, on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And I just wanna say thank you to our community for the grace and for the understanding and for the support that we show each other. It's very, very important and it just shows who we are as Pistons. And I'm very proud of our city, our, our residents and our city staff. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody. So with that, thank you, Madam Mayor. Council Member Franklin. I would just echo all the deputy mayor's remarks um, in full agreement. Thank you all. Have a great night. Councilmember Green. 
All right. I also want to thank uh, Matt Kumaras and the Boys and Girls Club team. It was super awesome. Not only cheering for the students, but also cheering for the parents who get their kids to go into a classroom, which was pretty awesome. Um, with that, I do want to wish all of the parents out there and all the kids in Vista Unified School District a happy first day of school. It was the first day of school at my house and my son, Joey, who is an uh, eighth grader. It's his first day of eighth grade. School was a little different today. He said that initially his first class was a little along by the end of the day it kept getting better so um you know we are all in this together it's not what we'd all seen it look like i'm sure you guys have seen the first day of school pictures with the masks and everything going across social media uh, but the truth is we're all working together to make a difference to get back to normal and uh, i just want to make sure that all the parents and all the students out there know that as a city as a staff and as a council we're all here with you man we're here supporting you uh keep your sanity smile lots uh remember to see the positive in every situation because there is positive out there. We're all loved. So uh, have a great day. Thank you, council. Thank you, city staff, for all that you do. Great meeting tonight. It's Taco Tuesday. Wow! <laughs> council member Contreras. Well, uh, my colleagues pretty much have said it all. Uh, so I want to echo everything that has been said before me. Um, you know, big shout out to our firefighters, not just here in Vista, but, you know, throughout California. Um, it's every, every fire season, it just gets worse. So, you know, um, just praying that uh, we make it through without any incidents here. Um, I want to say that uh, I have been snorkeling in La Jolla, and I'm noticing right now looking at my face, but I brought that up because I think trash as I'm snorkeling. Um, and, you know, I know we've talked about trash a lot. Uh, please, 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 Vista, dispose of your trash properly. All of that flows out into the ocean. Um, and if you want to be a little bit proactive, um, you know, Come join us on Wednesday at Luz Duran Park at 9 a.m. I do a trash pickup every single Wednesday, and we can, uh, you know, stop some of this from flowing out to the ocean. So um, with that, thank you, everybody. Great discussions. Uh, not very long ones today. <laughs> so uh, have a rest, a fantastic rest of your day. The sun is still out. So. <laughs> City Manager Patrick Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. As was mentioned, um, the fires that are occurring all over the state and uh, specifically the Valley Fire in San Diego, I thought I'd give you an update on uh, where our fire crews are and how we're preparing. Um, as you know, the Valley Fire started on Saturday. It's burned over 17,000 acres. Uh, it is uh, at 3% containment. And the big concern is the Santa Ana winds that are uh, due not only today, but through tomorrow. Uh, and the weather, National Weather Service uh, has predicted that these winds will be very strong in the East County, probably not so much uh, at the magnitude uh, where we're at, but significant uh, winds on the East County. And that is going to play a part with not only the Valley Fire, but any other fires that may erupt during that time frame. So we're very conscientious about that. Uh, there is a red flag warning uh, through tomorrow at eight o'clock. Currently, Vista has two crews uh, at the Valley Fire. We had one crew that was assigned from the, uh, the get-go of the fire. And then we had another crew that was at the Sheep Fire in Northern California that was coming down today. And as they came down today, they got deployed uh, directly to the Valley Fire. So we have two crews uh, that are currently uh, working the Valley Fire. We also have a pre-positioned North County strike team uh, that has um, been uh, staffed up in case there is anything that breaks out for us in the county or specifically the North County. And we have an engine that's assigned to that as well as two chiefs. And then we also have a firefighter paramedic that is um, working as a fire line medic at one of the fires as well. So um, that's in place. We have upstaffed the department uh, specifically through tomorrow to make sure that if there is a wind event that we're prepared for it. And so we're hoping that uh, 
uh, fingers crossed that all goes well, specifically over the next couple of days uh, and this fire season, but did want to let everybody know that if you need more information on wildfire preparedness or tips, you can go to our website, which is cityofvista.com, and you can go to backslash emergency prep and receive all of that. So that is it. Thank you. Hey, city attorney, do you have anything today? No, I do not, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, how about our city clerk, Kathy Valdez? Do you have anything else today? No, I do. I just want to apologize for technical difficulties um, earlier. I appreciate everybody's patience. Have a great night. Okay, before we go, I have, um, actually, I have my grandson is a, a fire medic up, up north in Big Sur and, and up in that area. He's been up there for like over two weeks now, going on three weeks, so is a fire line medic, so... Um, and I got my other little grandkids back in school that live with me, which is so exciting <laughs> to have them gone during the day. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but with that, I want to end with this, that this Friday is Patriots Day. 19 years ago, on September 11th, our lives were changed forever as a result of the terrorist attacks, attacks against the United States. Patriots Day is a time to pause to honor the memories of those who lost their lives and the men and women who responded to the call of duty to protect our way of life. So on Friday, let's pause and pay tribute to them. We also acknowledge the living who serve our country. We thank them for the great sacrifices that they make for all of us each day. So just on Friday, take a few minutes to remember those and to remember um, Patriots Day. So with that, I will adjourn our meeting. Thanks, everybody.